use a linear model to make predictions. Now, a linear model is generally talked about in a y equals mx plus b called slope intercept form. And we do this because this allows us to identify important information from context and then put it in uh, an equation that will allow us to graph it, make predictions, or use anything else with this linear form. Now, when we have an equation in slope intercept form, it's important to remember that m is the slope. And slope is the constant change over time. So something that happens again and again and again and is consistent. B is our y-intercept. Generally, our y-intercept is when time equals zero, or it's our initial value, also sometimes known as our starting point. So those are all of the ways that I talk about y-intercept. So let's go ahead and play with these. A new runner can run half a mile without stopping and each week adds one point, excuse me, 0.15 miles to the distance. Use the model y equals 0.15x plus 0.5 to predict the distance the runner will run without stopping during week 12. Now you'll notice the slope is 0.15 because that's the constant change, right? Each week we add on. And the initial value was 0.5, that's how much we started with. So we have the y equals 0.15x plus 0.5. Now, in this case, x is time, right? Generally, our independent variable is time, which in this case is the number of weeks, whereas y is what we're trying to find, which is the total miles. So in this case, we know week 12 is what we care about. So that means x equals 12. So in my equation, y equals 0.15 times 12 plus 0.5. Now we solve with, uh, you know, order of operations. So we're going to multiply first. 0.15 times 12 is 1.8, and then we still have our half mile there at the end. When I add those two together, I end up with y equals 2.3 miles. So if this runner continues at this pace in week 12, this runner will run 2.3 miles without stopping. And this is the purpose of linear models, that we can use them to predict future information based on a constant change over time. Let's do one more. A jar of flour starts with eight cups of flour. Each batch of dog treats made requires half cup of flour. Use the model y equals negative one half x plus eight to determine how much flour remains after making six batches of dog treats. Now here you'll notice that the slope is negative one half because we use that flower and it goes away. So because it decreases, we have a negative change over time. And eight is how much flower we start with. So we are using the y equals negative one half x plus eight. I think it's important to recognize the values of x and y. So x is the number of batches of dog treats. And if you struggle determining this, think about what the slope represents. Right, this is a half of a cup of flour per batch, right? Each batch, that means X is the number of batches that we're making, okay? Um, all right, so then Y is the remaining or the total flour. How much do we have left? Okay, so it tells us six batches, so we know X equals six. Let's substitute that into our equation. So Y equals negative one half six plus eight. Again, order of operations. So negative one half times six is three. So y equals three, excuse me, negative three, because negative times positive is a negative. So y equals negative three plus eight. And when I add those together, I end up with five. So we would have five cups of flour remaining after making six batches of dog treats. Now, one thing that I do want to throw out with this is that if you struggle with um, using these models, sometimes just with the context of the questions, you can use, I call it just common sense to figure out the answer. So don't freeze up and think, how do I do this? Just use your, you know, your, I guess, life happenings and life skills to work through the material to figure it out. You know you're using half of a cup per batch. If you make six batches, that means you've used three cups. You started with eight, how much do you have left, right? So there's always, well, usually another way to figure it out if you struggle with the linear model.